Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Today I'm reviewing an HO scale B36-7 locomotive from Rapido Trains. Despite the Santa Fe engine on the box, don't be fooled, this is the SP version. My model represents an SP B36-7 as delivered. This is the first time a B36-7 has been offered in HO scale in plastic. Rapido offers this model in two versions. The MSRP for the DC version is $229.95. The MSRP for the version with DCC and sound is $339.95. I paid $299.98 for my sound equipped model from Factory Direct Trains. We'll start the model at 100 possible points. The model comes in a sturdy cardboard box. Inside is some documentation. A two-piece plastic cradle surrounded by foam protects the model. The operating manual is cleverly styled to look like GE literature. The round logo has an RT for Rapido trains instead of GE. The manual includes a brief prototype history, information about operating the locomotive on DC or DCC, warranty information, and some of Rapido's usual humor. Exploded view drawings are also included. The rear emergency light on my model was not attached. Fortunately, it was still in the box. Rapido recommends using white glue to reattach parts, though you could also use CA. This is a minor issue, but I don't think a brand new model at this price should have broken parts, so I'm taking five points. This is a good box that should protect the model for storage and transport. I compared the model to photos that I found online and to photos inside Southern Pacific Historic Diesels number 19. Overall, Rapido's model appears to be a close match. Hard to fix details like radiator grills and hood doors appear to be in the right places. These SP units had a lot of stuff on them and the model does a good job reproducing the overall look. They did a good job with the air conditioner and the SP style antenna box on the cab roof. I did find a few small discrepancies. The plow is incorrect. This could be fixed by replacing it with an aftermarket part. Many of these units were delivered with a rear backup horn. While the model captures the as-built appearance of these units pretty well, it lacks this detail. Many of the real engines lost these horns within a few years of entering service, so depending on what year you're modeling, not having it there is not entirely wrong. Adding an aftermarket horn wouldn't be too difficult. Units 7754 to 7769 were equipped with alternate flashing lights instead of the usual SP oscillating light. The oscillating headlight castings on the model don't look quite right for that, and on many units they were left unpainted. Harder to fix is the way the lights are set up. Since both lenses are lit from a single source, there's no way to program the decoder to flash the lights correctly. 90s era modelers like myself could get around this by deleting the lights and installing cover plates. Most of the units in this series had a TE stencil under the cab windows and were lettered Pine Bluff under the road number. The Rapido unit lacks these details. Aftermarket decals could be used to reproduce these markings. The underframe mounted bell is in the wrong place. It should be on the engineer's side in front of the fuel tank, not behind it on the fireman's side as on the model. As an SP modeler myself, I don't think any of these issues are deal breakers. For the price though, I think Rapido could have put just a bit more effort into these areas, so I'm taking five points. The paint on the model is opaque and thin enough not to obscure small details. The colors look accurate or very close to my eye. The markings are crisp. The tiny writing on the truss plate and warning labels is legible with magnification. According to the manual, the handrails on this model are metal with plastic stanchions. These look a lot better than some of the all-plastic handrails I've seen on other models, so I think Rapido made a good call here. There's a lot of detail under the sill, with enough plumbing and small parts to satisfy most detail-conscious modelers. The engineer's side front truck has a brake chain, and the fireman's side front truck has a speed recorder cable. All of the trucks have brake and sander lines. In front, the model has the characteristic SP light package. The standard window arrangement without the SP L-shaped window is correct for the units in the 7754 to 7769 number series. The numbers in the number boards are behind clear plastic, making them look like numbers behind glass. I really like this effect, something I often do on models that I paint myself. I also like the nose grab irons, which are thin in cross-section and look close to scale. The pilot has uncoupling levers, an MU cable, and hoses. The cab has photo-etched sunshades, wind deflectors, and armrests. It also has a full interior. On the corners, the steps have see-through perforations. In back, the rear grab irons are separately applied. The upper box for the light cluster is slightly offset to one side. That seems a little odd, but I haven't found a dead-on shot of the rear of an SPB 36-7, so I can't say whether it's correct or not. Unfortunately, the rear emergency light doesn't operate. 
In the manual, Rapido says that they couldn't get the wiring in there. To that, I say, granted, this is an EMD model, but if I can get an LED in there, Older GE units like this don't have as much going on up top as EMD units, but what's there looks accurate. The front horn is in the correct location for these units. I like the exhaust stack. It doesn't extend down into the model, but the bottom is painted black to give the illusion of depth. With some weathering, it would look even better. The radiator grills are photo etched. As I mentioned earlier, there's good detail under the sill. Flipping the model over shows off the air reservoir detail. All four axles are powered and all the wheels pick up current. The model has rust-colored knuckle couplers on both ends. The front coupler is high, so I'm taking five points. The rear coupler is low. All the wheels are engaged according to the NMRA standards gauge. There is no body wobble. The engine weighs 16.6 .6 ounces. I measured a peak drawbar pull of 3.3 ounces on my force gauge. Many HO scale diesels pull around 2.5 ounces, so this engine has good power. I'm running the engine on DCC and I haven't changed any of the decoder settings. The model is set to address 3 from the factory. F0 turns on the headlights, which are directional. The front light is on when the engine is set to move forward, and the rear light turns on when the engine is set to move in reverse. F7 dims the headlights. F13 turns on the gyro light. As I mentioned earlier, though this effect would be correct for most SP engines, it's not correct for this one. These lights are also directional. F17 turns on the emergency light in the front only. The rear light doesn't operate. F19 turns off the number boards, which are on by default. F8 turns on the sound. F2 sounds the horn. F1 rings the bell. F4 turns on the dynamic brake sound. F9 activates the full throttle feature, which allows the prime mover to notch up or down independent of the locomotive's speed. This is good for simulating starting under a heavy load or coasting. Let's see what we've got. My model had a loose part, so I took five points in the packaging category. Though the model is overall very accurate, some small details are incorrect, so I took five points in the prototype accuracy category. The engine had two couplers at the wrong height, so I took 10 points in the standards and operation category. That leaves us with a total of 80 out of 100 possible points, which would be a B- on a report card. This is a good model and it deserves a green signal. Overall, I think Rapido did a really good job on this engine. Even though it has a few minor flaws, it's still an excellent model. If you're looking for some modern motor power for your layout, I think you might like it.